Let's talk about Linux, kernel builds, and how they are being improved drastically by something called fast kernel headers, which have been in development for a while now because work has been on and off for this as early as January 2022. I'm excited to see some more dev in this particular segment as the fast kernel headers project will bring significant improvements to the Linux kernel build process. How so? Well, it's a comprehensive rework of the, the Linux kernel's headers, hierarchy, and dependencies. Effectively, this will make the Linux kernel build faster, which is fantastic for developers, maintainers, and the likes of kernel hackers who want to update their Linux kernel and have to build it from scratch. Let's read about Ingo's message here to Linus. Torvalds, I'm pleased to announce the first public release of my new fast kernel headers project that I've been working on since late 2020 which is a comprehensive rework of the Linux kernel's header hierarchy and header dependencies with dual goals of one, speeding up the kernel build, two, decoupling the subsystem type and API definitions from each other. So this here is nearly two years ago and why I wanted to bring this up. First, before we get into the latest, is the improvements. We have a 78% improvement based on a performance counter stats with make and J96 on the kernel using the fast headers switch. So this is based on the elapsed time in seconds, we see a 78% improvement, which is amazing. And in terms of using the CPU or how long the CPU is used with respect to time, the fast headers version one, almost a 62% improvement. This patch includes over 2,200 different commits. And that's mainly because it has to go back and rework a lot of the ways that we include headers in various different files that belong to the source of the Linux kernel. So basically, there's been even more work done to this fast kernel headers patch. Things that will help us both speed up both absolute and incremental build times, which is going to give us a significant reduction in build time, giving us more speed, and just overall minimizing dependencies. So the latest in this fast kernels patch is this patch is set to aim to reduce the dependencies between headers in order to have cleaner code and speed up the build. It continues previous efforts by other developers as a preparation. The first patch adds a hashtag include directives to source files that were missing previously, but due to indirect includes, this was never noticed. After the cleanup, many missing directives would result in compiler failure. The second patch removes superfluous hashtag include directives, some of which may have been left over from the refactoring patches. The third patch places existing Hashtag include directives with narrower ones, e.g. use spinlock types.h instead of spinlock.h. This continues the work of others that have been done over the years. And this is fantastic that others are also focused on trying to make the Linux build quicker because it directly affects developer productivity. It encourages other people to contribute. It makes for better collaboration efficiency and allows us to innovate the Linux kernel faster. So it's very fantastic to see people like Ingo and Max here, continuing their efforts to improve the Linux build times, which has a very broad set of implications that are going to be helpful for the Linux community. It's a wonderful thing to see this type of development in Linux, as it's really hard to see across other open source projects, such a desire to optimize even the builds, not just the code. The remaining patches add new types, headers with lighter dependencies, they have only basic struct, enum, constant macro definitions, and maybe a few trivial inline functions, but no extern functions and no complex header dependencies. Just like the other attempts to reduce the header dependencies in the past, this is just the beginning. There are still too many dependencies and the speed up gained by this large patch set is not yet impressive. Prior to this patch set, let's break this down here because it is a little cryptic, but I believe real is the elapsed time from start to finish of the call to build. So it took 34.67 seconds for a build process to complete as observed by a user. User is going to be the total time of the CPU that it takes in user mode. This includes non-kernel code and time spent in user mode libraries and system calls. And then finally the system, the total amount of time the CPU spent within the kernel build process, AKA the CPU spending time performing system calls on the behalf of an application. So with these three numbers, all we really care about is what kind of decrease we got in time. So with the patch set, we go from 34.67 in real to 34.12. Now, this may not seem like a tremendous amount of time. And even the author says this, that it can be improved. But even incremental improvements like this save a lot of time. Because you have to compound this across 
all the various different people who build the kernel on a daily. So if you save a few seconds or even a half second or less over the entire build, once you extrapolate that across a thousand people, let's say 1,000 people save a half second, that's roughly 8.3 minutes. Every time a thousand people build the kernel, that was saved as a cumulative time, which is quite insane to think about. User took 23 minutes, 13 seconds, versus with the patch, 22 minutes, 45 seconds, a significant improvement there. And then two minutes, 26 seconds went down to two minutes, 21 seconds. This has been tested by Max on a patch set with an ARM 64 and an AMD 64, pretty sure. Other architectures may fail to build, but before I test all of them, I'd like to get some feedback on whether the approach would be accepted for more gains, huge headers like Linux MM.H, Linux FS.H, and Linux Schedule.H will need to be optimized. Nearly everybody includes them, and they include nearly everything. Did you know about the attempts at the fast Linux kernel headers and the patches that have been introduced to Linux over the last few years? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, smash that like button. This comprehensive work on the Linux kernel's header dependencies and the hierarchy has definitely sped up the kernel build, and great people like Ingo and Max are, are spending their time saving us time Overall, the fast headers tree offers a 50 to 80% improvement in absolute kernel builds performance on supported architectures. Finally, let's go over a schedule or commit for the fast Linux headers version three so we can explore some of the improvements that we get with this type of speed up. So this is a branch from a while ago, which includes a merge of the schedule or build speed up of the fast headers tree. So here is the improvement below. This was based on the vanilla kernel version 5.13. Basically, what we're going to look at is right here. So while building the, the kernel scheduler, it took 2.95 seconds here in elapsed time. And then with the patched kernel, it took 2.84 seconds. Basically, we get a summary at the bottom. CPU time used to build a schedule dropped by 60.9%. A reduction from 22.1 clock cycles to 8.7 clock cycles. The wall clock time to build the scheduler dropped by 3.9%. A reduction from 2.95 seconds to 2.84 and the reason this is amazing is, could you imagine using 60.9% less time from the CPU in order to build something like the scheduler and then extrapolate that across the entire kernel? Again, it's exciting to see how much effort people are putting into this, including the Linux kernel and all open source development, because we all benefit from this at the end of the day. We have people like Ingo and Max to thank for this type of development. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe below for more Linux and programming videos. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.